Welcome to Cinemagna. In today's video, we will showcase the behind the scenes of the 2022 American thriller film titled No Exit. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel to be notified when new videos are released. No Exit is an upcoming American thriller film directed by Damien Power from a script written by Andrew Barra and Gabriel Ferrari and based on Taylor Adams' 2017 novel of the same name. A college student is caught with a group of people at a mountain rest station during a blizzard on her way home from seeing her mother. When the young woman discovers a stolen child in a car belonging to one of the persons inside, the group finds themselves in a horrific life-or-death situation as they try to flee while trying to figure out who among them is the kidnapper. The film, which is distributed by 20th Century Studios and stars Danny Ramirez and Dennis Haysbert, will be released on Hulu on February 25, 2022. Without much further ado, please enjoy the behind-the-scenes video. What's your name, son? What's your name? Lars. Once. You, you want to play? Or? Sure. The next person's got to put down a two, an ace, or a three. And you put down as many of that card as you have. So if you have three threes, you can put them all down. Not even on this map. I know just on a camera so we don't have steady cam coming through that shot. So coming out or going no, no, right at the very beginning of the scene. Just just going up. Do you, you want to come in the later about the Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Wrong guy. I 
think that throughout the entire um, story, she changes a lot. It's a very intense, pivotal moment in her life. So who Darby is in the beginning of the film is entirely different than who she is at the end. Um, still the same backbone, um, still the same resilience, and maybe some sass, but all in all, I think her perspective on the world and thus her humanity has shifted um, acutely throughout the course of the film. Um, I think Darby at this visitor center, at this rest stop, um, Darby does not want to be <laughs> at the rest stop. Um, I think it's probably the last place in the world she wants to be. I think one of the most special things about Darby is that, especially in this context, um, is that she, all of her faults um, or perceived faults that maybe society deems as faults um, about her history, about her habits and her way of relating to the world end up being extreme strengths in this situation. Um, I think she has, you know, very specific um, talents that I think aid her journey. One of my favorite things about this film is that it nuances the idea of a good person or a bad person. I think that each of the characters in No Exit have um, their own personal trauma and their own pain and, and histories that contribute to the position that they're in and the dire circumstances and dire actions that they've taken in this uh, moment. And I think that I think that each of them is a hero in some capacity and each of them is the villain. And, and to nuance that, I think, is what's so special about No Exit. He's lovely and sensitive and very protective and he's such a great listener and has such vivid and and distinct um, visions for each of our characters that I think we've all benefited deeply from having him as our director. The first time that I read the script, I think it, what drew me to it and I was like, ah, this would be an amazing project to work on is because it feels like a play. So the, the way that there's a single location, it just, it draws you to this, it feels like a stage play, but a very grounded, hyper-realistic, um, plays in real time story that the book captures really well. Um, and I think the, the film is gonna do that justice. Um, so I think just, just following along with these storylines of all these complex characters happening real time and all these reveals, um, I think is, is what's gonna make it special. And the way Damien's shooting it, I think is gonna blow people's minds. Because um, you just never know who's going to turn and when and why. Cut to a rehab center where we meet Darby, who is an incredibly complex character who's been through so much. And she sets off her journey and ends up at the Muir's Rest Center um, and doesn't know what she's going to stumble into. She's got her own personal problems that she's dealing with. Her mom's in the hospital and she's like thinking about that. And um, as she's trying to get cell service, um, she discovers the thing that I think would terrify anyone, um, but also put them in this position that as a bystander, you either respond and, and uh, step up to the plate or you kind of walk away and ignore it. But um, Darby through this adventure, this chaotic, bloody adventure, is um, pushed to the end of her rope to see what type of person she's going to be. And I think Damien is one of the loveliest human beings. So beyond what this movie is and the amount of blood in it, um, he is an incredibly vulnerable and powerful person that um, has such a, a specific take on this that um, it took me a couple of days to fully be like, you know what, I have to fully trust Fall. Damien sees just, and as, as we've gone through it, it's such a beautiful and powerful vision of this story and it's going to make people cry and he he gets excited as it as as it started getting more and more intense you just see like sparkles in his eyes because he knows um it's like i feel like it's like a train and it's it started getting it started a little slow started picking up speed and then once everyone's cards are on the table it is full steam ahead and the moment it got full steam ahead you just see damien in this element He's like, like, and it's just been beautiful to watch. Dennis has just been from day one. He gives all the wealth of knowledge that he's accumulated through his career. Every day, just giving you answers to questions you didn't know you had. 
Um, he senses like if you're in a, if you feel a little discomfort or a little bit odd about a specific thing or you're working through something, he'd go in and give us his um, worldly advice. And um, he's been a rock for a lot of us through just his, um, I don't know, he's got, there's something about his presence. Uh, it's about a uh, young lady named Darby who uh, comes up the mountain on her way to see her mom and a uh, snowstorm comes up and she has to go to a visitor center where she uh, you know comes upon a uh, little girl that's been you know tied up and gagged in a van and she has no idea whose van it is or who of the five people that she eventually sees inside the visitor center is. So it becomes a, a race t for time, you know, and a whodunit, and who else is involved. Ed is at the rest stop with his wife, Sandy, and uh, she's taking him on his little, uh, to his favorite city as kind of a little gift, so he thinks. Uh, it happens to be his favorite gambling city as uh, Las Vegas is too loud, too big for him. But Reno's just right. And that's where they're going to continue to go when the storm passes. I kind of uh, felt like she was my daughter in the, uh, in the movie. Uh, her father was a, uh, a Marine who, who died. And I'm, you know, and Ed plays, is a former Marine. So we, uh, we, we have a bond. And she's probably one of the, uh, for a young actress, shows great, deal of experience, you know, well beyond her years. And I can say that about uh, David and Danny as well. All these guys, I mean, they're on a trajectory that I think um, is going to take Hollywood by storm. Damien brings to this film a sense of calm determination and inspiration. His, uh, his direction is was minimal, but on point. He would just come in and say, okay, that was great. Can you just insert this or insert that? You know, say this this time and just kind of, you know, get him going a little bit, you know? And he would say that for everyone, you know? And that's what I was saying is, you know, it's like doing a play and it just sort of ebbs and flows. And everybody took on their part and, uh, and ran with it, and under his guidance, you know, he was, I, I won't say pulling the strings so much as just, you know, with a gentle hand guiding us through it. Well, we meet a young woman, Darby, in a um, rehab clinic, and uh, she gets a call to say that her mother's in hospital and um, may die, so she breaks out of the centre, steals a car, hits the road, then she gets caught in a blizzard in the Sierra Nevadas and has to shelter in a visitor centre um, with four other strangers and when she's out trying to find some cell service she discovers there's a kidnapped girl in a van outside. Now Darby has to work out who the kidnapper is, um, how to get out of there and escape with her life. You know Darby is a recovering addict and when we meet her at a um, you know court as assigned uh, rehab centre she's there instead of prison um, very much feeling like rehab might not be the answer for her. Um, and maybe even that she doesn't deserve a second chance. Um, so she's an unlikely hero in many respects. Um, you know, uh, tough but flawed. Um, and, and that for me makes her much more interesting as a hero. Um, someone who the audience might not be sure is going to get out of that situation um, unscathed. Yeah, I mean, I think the film is really about how um, desperation uh, pushes people to do terrible things. Um, I think that these are difficult and desperate times we live in um, for a lot of people. Um, so the film feels really relevant um, in that sense. Um, I think Lee Marvin once said that he didn't play villains, he just played people who were having a hard time getting through their day, um, doing what he could, doing what they could, you know, with the means available. And I really feel like that applies to all of these characters, heroes and villains. What I like about thrillers and what I like about contained thrillers particularly is that it's less about a character journey. You know, these characters aren't, um, we don't spend that much time with them. And it's more about how true character is revealed under intense pressure. 
And I think the film just continually asks you, who are you? Who are you really? No, who are you really? And every, uh, and every character has to face that question. I've loved shooting in New Zealand. Um, if, I, if I'm making my next film in Australia, I wonder how I can import an entire Kiwi crew. Um, they've been great. Um, it really has felt like my New Zealand film family here. We've shot most of the film um, here in the studio at Penrose in Auckland. Uh, we're shooting some scenes in Rotorua, or we've shot some scenes in Rotorua, some nighttime exteriors at the Redwood Forest down there, um, as well as um, a couple of other um, exteriors uh, down there. Uh, and we're also shooting the uh, rehab clinic at a psychiatric hospital in Kingseat. And it's apparently one of the most haunted places in uh, New Zealand. I was told that one of our security guards last week um, walked off the job because he saw two ghostly figures. I think it's just a, a page turner in the way that it, like an old fashioned thriller where it, it feels, feels, and I you don't want to use Hitchcock because he's such a, a god of cinema, but th in that same way that it just, f it feels, it feels very character based and very, uh, story based instead of it's not, it's not it doesn't feel cheap it feels like there's a, a really a, a motivation and a way in and I think then um, and with great characters and a, and a, and a pulse to it. Havana is a, s brilliant as, an, as just a very intelligent person and is and very emotionally intelligent. She's only done three movies which is insane to me because she just led this with throwing her whole self into it and is a very unselfish actor, always there for you as other actors, always exploring, um, very, has a really keen sense of what's truthful for her gut, like follows that instinctively. He wanted Lars to be as complex as possible and, and, and was into exploring him with me and, and so we did three takes on that callback, over, it was over Zoom and every take was very different and then we just started talking about it and then when Ash came in, we all, then the three of us would talk about it, and then we had the, the first read through here, and we talked about it, and the costume, it felt like a constant conversation where he was very specific, but also allowed for a lot of input on, and collaboration on my part. You, I remember the first time going on the set, I was like, oh, it's so homey, it's a, it feels, and now I go in there and I have a visceral reaction in a, not a good way. I don't even want to go into that building, and that only came from all the, the thing the, from shooting in sequence, because now these last se scenes I've had to do, I feel that the room's energy and the people's, what's all, all the memories that's happened there as that I've, we've actually created, not something I have to create in my mind, but things are actually happened, um, which is a very rare occurrence. And you feel, you, you feel like you're in a snow globe of, of kind of horror and, and that it's gonna affect you, you know, and, and it's gonna affect the movie. It is, a psychological thriller involving six misfit wounded people that are trapped in a visitor center trying to figure out who done it whatever who done it means she's an amazing fresh beautiful spirit and talent she's a a tremendous person and it's, it's like she's, she's new to acting, I believe. I've heard her story, and she was a dancer and a visual artist. And, um, but this, it, she's, meant to, she's meant to be a storyteller. And Darby is, I mean, Darby goes through the ringer in this film. And Havana has that ability to be still and simple and just with her eyes express a whole story in itself. Um, something I still strive for as an actress, and um, but she's, yeah, she's, she's just lovely. I'm, I've been very blessed to have her energy around. There's quite a few, and I think they vary on which character's story you're sort of following. I had mentioned earlier that it's like we're this this group of misfits. We're all wounded people to some degree. Most of us hiding a secret that we don't want anyone else to know. So there's, there's themes of, of deception and honesty and what's reality, what's not. Who trust? Who can you trust? And I think Damien first was mentioning, particularly from my character, well, really for all of us, desperation. What drives people? 
in terms of, in moments of desperation and, and the choices that they make when they're panicked and desperate and they have no exit, they have no way out. So there's this slow unraveling that I think is gonna be fascinating as an audience member to tr I mean, when I first read the script, I was like, what, who? Them, it's, it, you know, you, you start going, oh, it's that person. And, and, and I think it, it'd be fascinating to be in that moment, trying to figure it out, but also watching each person unravel and being brought into their psyche um, and the reality of, of where they are and being trapped. Oh, Havana is so sweet and kind and, and so perky. It's really fun to play with her. And um, it's really nice because I don't have much kids on this set. Um, so she's kind of like a big sister to me, which I love. And, and from day one, I knew we were going to be great friends and we made a great bond. Oh, Damien Power is amazing. He's very calm, joyful, happy, and just the great mix for me. And I feel like that's, he's just an amazing director. Well, I feel like um, all, of, all of the cast have really put in all these different emotions and, and feelings to make the, make the audience, when they're watching them, be on the edge of their seats like, oh no, is she gonna be okay? And, and really feel what we feel and the emotions. And um, I feel like it's gonna put them in the mindset of like, oh no, I can't believe this is actually happening. What if this was real? And, and I feel like it, it's going to make the story come to life. And I'm excited for the audience to experience the story come to life. We had an incredibly great conversation with him. He completely understood what the movie was about. He understood um, what needed to be brought into the adaptation to make it sort of have a little more weight. And, um, and he had a great um, aesthetic sensibility, the whole idea of shooting all on stage and doing it like a Hitchcock film and, and all of that really appealed to me, mostly because the director in me was jealous, um, you know, that he got to shoot all on stage. But that was really, he, he just had, every idea was really a home run for me in my mind. I think that one of the biggest themes is life's a struggle. You know, everybody has got their struggles. Everybody in this rest stop, you realize, has their own struggle. Um, they're all pushing the boulder up the hill, as we say in the first scene. And um, Damien likes to say they all park their boulders out front. <laughs> um, and so everybody has their own, and that's what it is, sort of overcoming yourself. Each of these people are their own antagonist in many ways, and they have their own issues that they're dealing with. And I think that thematically, it's about finding that strength in yourself to sort of, um, um, figure out a way to get past your, the worst parts of yourself. Darby has isolated herself. She's decided she's never gonna be sober, that she's been in rehab, you know, a half dozen times. And at the top of the story, she says, I'm just okay being the way I am and whatever happens will happen. She's disconnected from her mother, disconnected from her sister. She's just decided that the best way to be um, is to be by herself. And so she taking care of anyone else is completely alien to her. And in this situation, she is utterly confronted with having to do the opposite of who she is. And there is no way she can turn away from this young girl, no way she can't help her. And it sort of helps to hopefully convince her that there's more to her <laughs> than this sort of um, addiction and other things that are going on inside of her. Filming in New Zealand is amazing. Um, it's tremendous, great crews. Um, um, we're inside, but even the little bit we're doing outside looks very much like the mountains in America, um, here in New Zealand, where the, the, the forest we're shooting in looks like it could be in the Sierra Nevadas. Um, but it is, and because we were primarily shooting inside, um, we could kind of be anywhere. And New Zealand, though, offered us for that, those brief little pieces where we were going to go outside, um, we could do that here as well. I mean, originally, I was thinking we could do 100% inside, try and do 100%, but there are some great locations here as well. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and comment on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are released.